Thank you for coming out also and just visiting us. Amen. We thank you for joining us on tonight. Amen. God is worthy to be praised. Yes. Amen. There's a whole lot going on in the world. I was just watching television just yesterday, the news, and began to see somebody else being attacked by the police officer. And began to see just so many things going on. But we got to understand one thing as believers. All lives matter. All lives matter. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus Christ came, amen, for a nation, glory to God. Why? Because everybody on the face of this earth, amen, matters to him, glory to God. Everybody, glory to God. Hallelujah. So I thank God, glory to God, that he didn't just come from one people, glory to God, from one race, glory to God. So if he didn't come from one race, glory to God, we cannot be wiping, wiping away, glory to God, doing away with a race, glory to God. All lives matter, glory to God. Oh, so I thank God all of, just for his word. And this helps us to understand when we say all lives matter. It helps us to understand because there was an individual one day, he's, God, Jesus began to go, to, I mean, God began to go to him and talk to him because he had some issues. And he, God began to ask him, he said, where's your brother at? And he began to say, am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> Glory to God. Not understanding, we are our brother's keeper. All lives matter. Glory to God. We're going to be coming from Acts chapter 17, and you can just turn me down just a little bit. Acts chapter 17, amen. Amen. God is worthy, amen. 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 Acts chapter 17, we're going to be coming from three different, two different verses, which the first one will be verse 24. Amen. Let's just give us a little bit of understanding, a little light. Amen. You know, the, the Bible just... Every time we read it, we get more out of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for just constantly giving us revelation, new light, amen, and just reminding us sometime of what we already know. 
Amen. Because sometimes we begin to go through life's child trials and tribulations. And sometimes this tribulation can kind of could put a little cloud on what we know. Amen. We forget about who we are <laughs> and what's our responsibilities. Amen. Because it behooves us, amen, to know that we all, all lives does matter. Amen. It's our responsibility, our duty to know that all lives matter. Amen. We are our brother's keeper. Verse 24 says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwell not in temples made with hand. Then we go to 26. And has made one blood all nations of man. For he dwells all the face, for he dwells on the, all the face of the earth, and have determined the time before appointed in the bonds of their end habitation. Amen. Lord, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're doing on today. And we thank you, Lord, for this word. And we ask you, Lord, to have your way. Touch our hearts and our mind and our soul that your will can be done even on today, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It would behoove us to just to know that it is our responsibility to know that we are our brother's keeper. Every believer should know that. The world may not never understand that we are our brother's keeper, but that's why they are so much they so they going through a constantly torn more because they don't understand that we are our brother's keeper, and God wants us to know that we are each one of each responsibility. The Bible states plainly as He talked to Cain that you are your brother's keeper. We never want to get in the place to begin to say that you know I'm I don't care about that particular person or that particular race, because when we begin to think that that is just us, we begin to separate ourselves. That's one of the key of the enemies. He wants to separate us, set us to a side so we begin to think that we're better than somebody else or that we begin to think that we're higher than someone else. He begin to isolate us to ourselves, begin to put thoughts in our mind and cause us to do things that's not God. Forgetting about what the Bible said, that he said that he came to save a nation. He said that he's all one blood. He did not say that, you know, I made this blood over here, I made this individual have separate blood. Every individual on the face of this earth is up, up under one blood. One blood. Why? Because God created one man and he created one woman. And between those two people, he said they multiplied and replenished the earth. So knowing that God created all of us, that we are brothers and sisters up under heaven. We just, we just have to continue to remind ourselves what's our, our responsibility up under heaven. heaven. What, what is our job? What are we supposed to be doing while we're here on earth? earth? We, we continue, continue praying for one another. We continue, continue looking one another up. When we, we see so many individuals going through situations, we begin to lift them up. When we, we see the chaos is going on inside the world, we begin to lift a dying world up. Why? Because we understand that, that, that many don't understand. understand. The world, the world may not never. The world will never understand what God is doing on this side of heaven. The world will never understand it because the Bible tells us that the world will never understand it because they're not inside of Him. So for those who are believers, that we say that we are inside of Him, we have to know what our responsibility is. He said that he, Jesus came and he, he created, he, he formed uh, the disciples. And as he formed the disciples, as he built the disciples, he, he told the disciples, he taught them the word. And as he taught them the word, he began to send them out to minister to a dying world. And as we come into the house of God, that's why the Bible lets us know not to forsake the assembly of God. Because when we forsake the assembly of God, we're separating ourselves again from the body of Christ. And when we separate ourselves, we cannot be where God wants us to be. We cannot be the disciples that he has called us to be. So that as we come into the body of Christ, we begin to be fed the word of God. And as he feeds us the word of God, he begins to teach us the word of God. And we begin to take that word to a dying world. And as, and as we, we take, take that, that word to a dying word, we begin to encourage others that let them know that they don't have to stay inside of a situation of no hope. They don't have to stay in a situation that where they don't understand why they have to go through situations in life. They begin to learn how to count in joy when they fall into diverse temptations. They begin to say, okay, I'm going through something, but I read somewhere, or somebody gave me a testimony and told me that I don't have to die inside of this situation, that I can live. 
And since I can live inside of this situation, I am going to be able to be able to help somebody else live inside of their situation. We are disciples of Christ. We are men and women of God. We are up under one body. We are up under our Lord and our Savior. And when we surrender our life to God, when we surrender our life, life to our Lord and the Savior, we begin to have him truly be Lord of our life. We don't begin to take on the world's thoughts as the world thinks that, you know, we got to write off for individual, write off a race of a people because how we've been treated. Yeah. One thing we do, we do know, if we stay before the Lord, if we stay in prayer, he can begin to move inside what the situation is on. Yeah. But when we begin to take matters in our own hands, we begin to cause, make more chaos. More corruption. Yeah. More things don't get better. They get worse. Yeah. But when we stay in a place of love, when we stay in a place of peace, yeah. when we stay in a place where God has called us to be and said, Lord, I, yes, I, I may not understand why this person is doing this, why this person is prejudiced, why this person is, is mistreating But I know one thing, God. I know if I stay in a place where you call me to be, you say love covers a multitude of faults. And if love comes a multitude of faults, that means that if I continue loving somebody, that did not mean that that he said that I will be able, he said that he will be able to cause a, a heap of fire on that person's head. Yeah. He said that when that heap of fire can cause a person to begin to turn away from their ways and begin to look at the love that they're receiving. Sometimes if we would just stay with we all the time we begin to just stay where God has called us to be. He can work things out. Many times we want to take matters in our own hand. We've been one of the whole grudges. We want to be mad at somebody. We have this sense of entitlement that's coming from the enemy. We know the thing is not right why, we, why it rises itself up inside of us, but we have this sense of entitlement at that time because the enemy has planted a seed inside of our head. So we feel like we're entitled to be mad at somebody. We're entitled to be angry at somebody. We're entitled to hold a grudge against somebody. A sense of entitlement which we know that it's not godly, we're doing it anyway because we feel that I don't want to forgive somebody. I don't want to forgive me because they've done so much wrong to me. I don't want to forgive them. But when we hold up our hands and say, God, it's me, it's me standing in any prayer, I want to be right where you call me. I don't want to write off people. I don't want to forget about people. I don't want to be like Cain and say, am I my brother's keeping the center? You're my brother, my husband, my wife, my brother, my sister, my mother, my friend, my the neighbor around the corner. I don't want to say that they are not my, I don't want to say that hey, I'm not their keeper. Yeah. I don't want to write them off and say they're not my problem. Yeah. I want to be able to say, Lord, I'm bringing them as well as myself to you because I understand if I bring myself to you and I bring them to you that I understand that you can work this situation out. No matter how difficult it looks, you can work this situation out. But we have to stay before God. We have to stay before God and constantly remind ourselves we are our brothers keeping. Don't allow the enemy to separate us. And to begin, because that's we've been getting to be separated. Yeah. We cannot work out our own soul salvation. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible lets us know that we work out our own soul salvation. Yeah. Day by day by day, as long as we live in the sight of heaven, we will have to work out our own soul salvation. That is to what? To die daily. Yeah. Whatever our situations are, to die daily. Yeah. Every day we choose a day to say, Lord, this is the day I choose to die daily. Whatever my strongholds are, I choose to die daily. Whatever my situation, whatever is holding me back, whatever is easy but seek to me, whatever keep me from being where you have called me to be, I want to die to that thing. Dying daily. Working on my own self, soul salvation. The Bible tells us over here in verse 24, it tells us that he says the heavens and the earth belong to the Lord and then he dwells within them. The heavens are over one accord with the earth. You don't see heaven arguing with the earth. We don't see heaven causing confusion with the earth. They're on one accord. And as we as mankind begin to be on one accord, we can see the power of God moving, not just in, in heaven and earth, but we begin to see God moving in our own personal life. We begin to see God moving in, 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 just around us. We begin to see his hand moving around us. God, Jehovah God, wants to dwell inside of us. He wants to dwell in us, but we have to be on one accord with him. We have to be on one accord with those that we are all believers. 
being on one accord. And as we're on one accord in our homes, that we're on one accord with our family members, that we're on one accord. Line up. Now, of course, there's still going to be some people that's not going to line up with the word of God. But we already understand the word said they will not understand what we're doing. They will not understand it. But as we stay on one accord with God, as we stay on one accord with the vertical relationship, God can work things out on our horizontal relationship. But we have to stay on one accord. We know one thing. The Bible tells us our ministry starts at home. But you and I have to continue working out our own salvation. The world may not under, never understand it. And that's why there's so much confusion here on earth between races, even between mothers and daughters and husbands and wives and people against people because they don't understand. But we have to know that we know all lives matter. Our mother lives matter. Our husband, our wives' lives matter. Our friends' lives, they do matter. Another race lies do matter. We have to continue reminding ourselves. The Bible states that God dwells not in the temple made with hands, but he dwells in the temple that is holy. He dwells in the temple that is true, a temple that will be true to his word, a believer that will be true to God's word, a believer that will hold true to the word that they have received. His word is truth. When we as believers stand up in truth, true to the word of God, no matter what comes our way, no matter how much or uh, what influence the enemy tries to come and, and influence us with, no matter what he tries to plant into our head, because thoughts are going to come. He is going to try to plant thoughts. He brings the thoughts to try to plant those thoughts in our life. But we can, the Bible says, we can resist the devil. We can resist those thoughts. We don't have to receive those thoughts. We can actually resist those thoughts. When we know those thoughts are not lined up with the word of God, then we know that we have to resist it. When we know that what's coming in our head is not lining up with the word of God, we have to resist it. I don't care who it's coming from. It can be coming from the best friend. It can be coming from my mother, our father. It doesn't matter who it's coming from. If it's not lining up with the word of God, we have to resist that thing. And not counting the individual as the enemy, but just understanding where they are. Yeah. Understanding everybody is not on the same plane. Mm. Everybody does not have the same faith in mm. walking according oh. to the word of God. Mm. Everybody is not in the same place. So understanding where your brother is, understanding where your sister is, so you can begin to relate to them. Mm. That you will not begin to count it as a offense that they come into you. How dare them say such and such. So we won't count it as offense, but we count it understanding that God has revealed to us some things about the people that's in front of us. And when he reveals to us some things about the person in front of us, we take that revelation and begin to use it in such a way that we take it to the cross. We give it to God. We see now what they're going through. We see now where their mind is at. So as we see where their mind is, we begin to give it to God, and God can begin to work that thing out inside of that individual. But we never want to get into a place that we say, am I my brother's keeper? And forget about the person that God has called us to be. He dwells in a place. He, he dwells in several different places. He dwells in heaven. He dwells in dwells on earth. And he dwells inside of us. A pure temple. A temple that is holy. A temple that desires to be righteous. A temple that desires to die daily. A temple that's desired to die, that, 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 that desires to be structured by his hand mm. as he departed with a clay. Mm. Structured by his hand each and every day. Yes. Strongholds have been poured down. Mm. And as strongholds have been poured down, they have been destroyed by the yoke of the thing that have been destroyed by God. Mm. But we have to do our part. Yes, yes. Constantly remind ourselves who we are mm. inside of God. Yes, it's merely just a place. A pure place, a blessing place, a spirit where the spirit dwells within the heart. God dwells in a pure place. He dwells with inside of us. The Bible tells us to hide the word in our heart. And as we hide the word in our heart, it cleanses our heart. It purifies our heart. So that way when we begin to go through, our heart is pure. So it won't just receive some of that stuff that it used to receive back in the day when we were young in the faith. We old it in the faith. As far as one may say that I'm grown up now because I'm not where I used to be. 
I'm not a child and I'm sipping on milk anymore. And I'm not a child and I'm doing things, the childish things anymore. I'm not throwing tantrums anymore because of something happened. I'm not throwing rages anymore because something happened. But I'm going to my father in prayer and says, God, I stand in the need of prayer because I see some situations inside my thing. I see some things that's inside of me that I don't like. So I'm coming before you that I can die to these things so I can be the man, I can be the woman, I can be the child that you call me to be. Yeah. Having a desire to die every day. Having a desire to pull yourself away. When you're separating yourself, you're going to separate yourself from anything. Separate yourself from anything that's not pure. Separate yourself from anything that is not holy. Separate yourself from anything that is not like Christ. Separate yourself from anything that would, would separate you from being all that he has called you to be. The word is true. We as people of God have to be true to the word. And as this word lived inside of us, as long as we live true to his word, we will die daily. We will continue to be shaped and molded and begin to look like him, begin to handle our affairs like him. We begin to speak his word with power and the anointing. Because why? Because our life is not what it used to be. Why? Because we don't feel like that we have to compromise anymore. So when we don't feel like we have to compromise anymore, we don't feel like that we're going to be tripping over every other thing that come our way anymore, then we can move forward in the things of God and speak with the power of the anointing of God because of the power of God, the Spirit of God is living inside of us. And as long as the Spirit of God is living inside of us, we can speak with power. We can speak with authority. Because He has given us that authority to speak with that power. Because the Word was to the set of our heart. So we speak it. Because it has power. Because the anointing is flowing behind that Word that you're speaking. And that's the glory of God. And as the Word continues flowing, glory of God. That Word continues flowing with the power and the anointing. It begins to touch lives. It's around us. Yeah. It begins, as the Bible says, it provokes people to live saved. Yeah. It provokes yeah. people to hungry for God. Yeah. It provokes people to, to want to be like God. It provokes people, glory God, to change from who they are to, to the, be the person God has called them to be. Provoking, glory to God. When we say that we are our brother's keeper, when we say all lives don't matter, we provoke even that officer, glory God, that pours us over, glory God, to do the right thing, glory God. Why? Because we are anointed and appointed by God, glory God. So he cannot do anything that would defile us, glory God. He cannot do anything that would take us outside of our character. Our character, glory God. Our character looks like Christ. Why? Because it's pure. Because our heart is pure. Why? Because we desire to die. Yeah. Why? Because we desire to be like him. Yeah. Glory to God. We desire to say, Lord, glory to God, if I suffer, I'm going to suffer in you. Mm. Glory to God. So if, my, if somebody defame my name, glory to God. To God be the glory. Mm. If someone does something against me, to God be the glory. Yeah. Lord, I'm standing, glory to God, on the foundation, glory to God, saying all lives matter. Yeah. Saying, God, I know who I am, glory to God, and I am my brother's keeper, yeah. yes, glory to God. When we understand who we are, we can be all that God has called us to be. In Ephesians chapter 3, glory to God, it says that. It says that Christ dwells in our heart through faith that has been rooted in love. Through faith that has been rooted in love. So, to gain that faith, we have to trust God. To gain that faith that we can have that's rooted in love. We have to trust God in our situation that we're going through at the point in time. The situation that we're going through at the point in time, we have to trust God. We cannot look at our situation as God has nothing to do with it or as God is not in it or as God has not allowed it to come our way. We have to trust God. Because if we do not trust God, and says, God, I, I, we don't trust God, then we're going to begin to act in our own strength. We're going to begin to act in our own power. We're going to begin to say, you know what? You do this to me, I'm going to do this to you. We're going to begin to talk back. We're going to be the whole grudges. We're going to begin to do things that's not godly. We begin to go to sleep with, 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 with anger. And when the Bible tells us, don't go to sleep with, 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 a, with a wrath. We begin to do things that's outside of the will of God. Mm. We begin to do things when we don't stay in the place 
of faith. Faith trusting God. And he's able to handle our fear at the toughest moment in our life. The toughest moment in our life, the toughest time that we're going through, we trust in God. God, I got faith. My faith is rooted in you. It's not in this situation, this present situation. It's not in my situation, but it's in you, God. Because I know, God, I know that I know that I know that you have never failed me. So I know that, God, that your word is true. Your word cannot lie. I know that your word cannot fail me. So I'm holding tight to your word. I'm holding tight to it because I believe in you. It's rooted. Our love is beginning to be rooted. Our faith begins to be rooted in love. Loving mankind. We are our brother's keeper. Yes. All lives does matter. Yes, but we have to have faith in God when we face our toughest situation. Yes. Well, no matter what, where it comes from, we have to know that we know that we know. Yes. Our faith is rooted in love. Yes. We have to know that we are our brother's keeper. Yes. We have to know that we are disciples, that our job and our responsibility mm -hmm. is to minister the totality to all mankind. All mankind. One blood, he said in this word. One blood, glory to God. One blood. He created us. He formed us each and every day when we surrender our will to him. He forms us. And as he began to form it, he's teaching us every day. And as we continue to render, surrender ourselves, he's renewing our mind that we would have the mind of Christ. It won't be the old mind anymore, glory to God. Won't be like I used to do, glory to God. Won't be like I used to think, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. It'd be a new mind, glory to God. Be handling my affairs with a new mind, glory to God. Oh, that's an awesome place to be. When we can have a renewed mind. Where we can see that we don't have to curse nobody out because they did us wrong. Glory to God. When we know the old man would have cursed him out. But we can know that we know that my mind has to be renewed. Glory to God. Because I'm not doing what I used to do. Glory to God. We don't have to begin to lay our hands on people though, because they did something to us. We know our mind has been renewed. Glory to God. Because we're not touching people like we used to. Glory to God. Oh, so we know our mind has been renewed. Hallelujah. That is an awesome place to be. That place by itself is enough to be the shout for. Glory to God. Because we know there had to be a miracle. Glory to God. To renew our mind, hallelujah. Because we know how we used to be, hallelujah. So we knew we took a miracle, glory to God, for us to be walking in Christ, hallelujah. For us to be able to have a renewed mind, we know it took a miracle to deliver us from God, hallelujah. We know what our own strength, glory to God, to guide us to where we are, glory to God. We know it's the power of God that moves, glory to God, and begin to touch us, oh God, to change us, hallelujah, Lord. We know, glory to God, it was God, it was not us, hallelujah. Wasn't our own strength, glory to God. It wasn't because I just want to be good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good can't be good enough, glory to God. When you want to die to yourself, hallelujah. When you want to change, glory to God. You can listen to all the self-motivation tape that you want to, glory to God. Hallelujah. But you cannot change the way Christ say change. Unless you were inside of him, glory to God. Hallelujah. Changing, glory to God. We're not just taking talking about the natural, glory to God. We're talking about walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. That we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, glory to God. That we will not give in to the flesh of the desires, glory to God. That we will die to those things. <coughs> as he has called us to do. <coughs> to die to those things. Rooted in love. Our faith is rooted in love. Over in John 14. The love is what Jesus is talking about. And it talks about if anyone who loved me. He keeps my word, and my father and I would make our home in him. Our, my father and I will make our home in him. That's the love he's talking about. When we walk in faith and our love is rooted, we're in him and he's in us. The Bible says that his father and he will dwell in us. We have to hold true to his word. We cannot give in. And if we ever find ourselves inside of a situation that we uh, uh, compromising, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason, ever find ourselves in a way of compromising, all we got to do is immediately say, God, I don't want to live here. Mm -hmm. 
immediately do it. The reason why I say immediately do it, because if we don't immediately do it, that thing begins to grow. Now, as that thing begins to grow, then our heart begins to get callous. Then we get a little bit more callous. Then we get a little bit more callous. And before we know, we complain about situations, complain about people, complain about things. Why? Because we did not deal with the situation that God revealed it to us. He rebuilt our hearts. He, he, he revealed the things that we have not dealt with. Or the things that we refuse to deal with. He revealed those things to us. So we can begin to deal with them. As he tells us many times, he told the disciples, he says, Satan wants to sift us. He comes to try to sift us by planting seeds A doubt. Because the Bible says that, like here, it says that we've got to walk in faith to have a rooted. So our faith will be rooted in love. When we do that, then we're going to go to God immediately and say, God, I see some things in myself I don't like, and I'm going to die for these things. I'm not going to let this thing fester in my life, in my life, because I don't want to. I don't want it to get to my heart. Yes, it may get to my mind, but I'm not going to allow it to get to my heart, because when it gets to your heart, then it's in there, and once it is planted into the heart, then it's hard to move. But if you get that thing, just because when Satan puts that thought in your mind, <clears throat> when he put that thought in your mind, you begin to deal with that thing at that very moment. Yeah. I said, devil, you're alive. I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to dwell on this thing. I'm not going to yeah. hold this thing. Yeah. I'm going to reject this thing yeah. because I know it ain't from God. Yeah. This is not God. This is not spiritual. Yeah. This is not what's going to get me to heaven. Yeah. This is not going to get me to live a, a peaceful life here on earth yeah. if, I, if I dwell on this foolishness. It's going to take away my peace. Glory yeah. God. And I'm not going to lose my peace over something that's foolish. I'm not going to lose my peace over something that, that's not, that doesn't mean, mean anything. Many times we get ourselves in situations that don't mean nothing. We begin to argue about situations, glory God, that don't mean nothing. Don't mean anything. And we begin to laugh about those things later on, glory God. But if we begin to deal with those things, if that won't get in our heart, then God's spirit can dwell with inside of us. Because the Bible says he cannot dwell in the defiled temple. And things of that nature will defile the temple that's inside of us. But when we stay in God, he stays inside of us, and he lives inside of us. Amen. In a pure temple, in a pure heart, God wants to have his way with us. Amen. He wants to continue shaping and molding us. Amen. He wants us to be our brother's keepers. Amen. He wants us to let the world know all lies matter. Amen. We cannot write off a race of people because of a group of people that's not doing right. Pray for the group of people. Lift up the group of people. Lift up the individual. Lift up your boss, your supervisor, your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad. Lift up those who bring situations in your life. Lift them up that God will can be done in their life. God wants to touch us every day. He wants to strengthen us every day. We have to constantly remind ourselves who we are. Constantly remind ourselves that we are disciples of Christ. Constantly remind ourselves that we are people ministering the gospel. We are dying daily. We are becoming more like him. That his glory will be seen in us. That his glory will be seen in us as we walk, as we talk, as we move forward in life. His glory is seen in us. That his life, his life, glory to God, his life will not be in vain to us. But his life will be victorious to us. Because his word is power. And his word is moving forth. As we move forth inside of him. We are an example of his word. When we begin to walk forth in love. When we begin to walk forth in truth. When we begin to walk forth in who he has made us. When we begin to continue walking forth towards the destination. Our destination is to be more like Christ. Our destination is to look like him. To talk like him. To allow his spirit to shine in us. To allow his glory to be in us. Not do what this came to And say, they are not my father. But say, Lord, I will keep them in prayer. I will stand on the wall. I will be my brother's keeper. I will love past my own natural ability. Because my own natural ability will fail. But I will love inside of you. Amen. Amen.
<laughs> God be glory. <laughs> Thank you.